Today we're going to do something a bit different, and what I mean by that is we're going to be working on this one-of-a-kind supercharged diesel Honda. Now, as far as I know, this is the only supercharged diesel Honda on the planet Earth, and while that makes this car unique, it doesn't mean we can't have fun with it. So, what we're going to do is remove the AMR500 supercharger and toss in an RHB31 turbocharger. That way, we'll still have boost for the little engine to feed on, because, well, diesel engines love boost. Now, I really like the supercharger, and it's exactly what the little Kubota D722 engine needs. But, in order to take full advantage of the instant boost we get from the supercharger, we had to build a complex computer-based engine management system in order to fully optimize the old-school mechanical fuel injection system on the diesel engine so it could work perfectly with the positive displacement roots-type supercharger. Now, this pile of junk on the passenger side of the car is a custom-made computer-based engine management system to control the fuel rack and the boost of the supercharger. Now, this system would be perfect for the new turbocharger, but as it turns out, whenever I mix electronics with nuts and bolts projects, well, I lose the attention of the majority of my audience, and the channel starts losing revenue pretty quick. I really think the problem is I spend way too much time fiddling with electronic gizmos, and that's because this stuff's not easy to do, and it can't be done in a single episode. Meh, it's fun for me, but apparently it drives away the majority of my audience. Anyway, we're going to be going in a new direction with this project and there'll be zero electronics, just nuts and bolts. So the complex control system that we built for this car is fascinating and you can check out our older episodes if you want to learn more. Basically, this system is an electronic version of the ALDA that's used on older Mercedes with turbocharged diesel engines. But the kicker is, on this application, the supercharger provides instant boost. So this system artificially manages the boost and automatically adjusts the limit of the fuel rack. Plus, as a bonus, this system watches the exhaust gas temperatures and it will automatically pull back on the fuel when the exhaust gas temperatures reach the danger zone. Now, you have to keep in mind the Kubota D722 engine that we're using is tiny and it doesn't make a lot of power. So with this system, we can feed the engine way more fuel than it can normally tolerate and in return, we get a nice boost in power without rolling coal or exceeding the exhaust gas temperature limits. It's a cool system, but it turns out it's way too complex and apparently not interesting for most of the folks who watch this channel. Channel. So we're going to get rid of it and go in a completely different direction. So let's remove this crazy stuff and start off fresh. Now, my accountant told me to do something with this car or get rid of it. So, yeah, in order to save this car from the junkyard, we have to keep making videos on it. But someday we may have to send this car to the crusher. Now, of course, this car is the perfect platform for crazy engine swaps, and that's because it's lightweight and still in great condition. So it's going to be a while before we scrap it, that's for sure. Now, our little French-built Renault with the 670cc Predator engine, that car is probably going to be sold for parts. Right now, it's basically a self-propelled parts car. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely a cool little car, but it needs a lot of suspension work in order to be safe. And that's something I'm not interested in doing. You see, the car is 56 years old and the suspension is all original. And most of the bushings in the suspension are getting kind of scary looking. Plus, to make things worse, finding parts for that car is not easy and perhaps it's time to let that one go. Fast forward a few minutes, and the supercharger, along with all the gizmos that make it work, have been removed from the Honda. This is a lot of stuff. Now, some of this junk is going to go right back onto the car. Well, basically, the induction and boost plumbing will get reused. That's a given. Now, getting rid of the supercharger and switching to a turbo does have some advantages. And we may pick up a few horsepower by getting rid of the parasitic drag required to spin the supercharger. Now, when it comes to turbocharging this little engine, well, this ain't my first rodeo. And we did run a turbo on this 719cc Kubota engine when it was in installed in the late great Saturn SC1. As a matter of fact, it was the lackluster performance of the turbo that made us take a serious look at the AMR500 supercharger. Anyway, this time around, well, we plan on modifying the turbo to see if we can squeeze a little bit more low-end boost from the RHB31. It'll definitely be interesting to see if there are any improvements that can be made to make this turbo a better choice in this extreme application. 
So this is the RHB31 Turbo, or it's also known as the VZ21 $100 eBay Turbo. It's a tiny turbo, and that's exactly what we need on this tiny 719cc three-cylinder diesel engine. Now, all the bolts on this little guy are definitely loose, and don't worry about that. I'm fully aware the bolts need to be tightened up at some point. Anyway, one of the things we learned from the Saturn experiments was this turbo can make up to 16 PSI a boost in extreme situations, and we definitely don't need a wastegate. You see, we did a lot of experiments with this adjustable wastegate gizmo, and in the end, it turns out this thing isn't necessary on this little diesel engine. So we're not going to use this thingy, and this time around, we're going to just lock the wastegate closed. Now I'm thinking about drilling and tapping this plate and using a bolt to press up against the wastegate to keep it closed and that may be the simplest way to disable the wastegate. Now without a functional wastegate, well realistically this turbo will make around 10 psi a boost under a hard load and 6 to 8 psi under a medium load. Now we can still get the full 16 psi a boost if we put the engine under an extremely huge load and that's not something that happens every day. Now, if you didn't know this by now, well, on normal applications, turbos don't make boost until there's a load on the engine. And this is because the exhaust gas pressures under a load are a lot higher, and it's the exhaust gas pressures that actually spin the turbo to make the boost. Now on this little turbo, the turbine maximum diameter is 35 millimeter and it has an exducer diameter of 26.7 millimeter. That's pretty small, but also keep in mind the completely stock 719cc Kubota three cylinder diesel engine, well, it doesn't generate high exhaust gas pressures because basically it's a lawnmower engine and the small turbine used on this turbo is about as good as we can do on a budget. Now in this housing, well, it looks like there may be a little bit of room for modifications and we may be able to blend this opening a little bit better. But before we do something like that, we need to get baseline data to see if blending the orifice actually helps or hurts performance. Now as far as the exhaust manifolds go, we have three choices if we want to use a stock Kubota manifold. Now this guy is interesting and it has the exhaust exit pointing up. This manifold, well, it really won't work because it would put the turbo above the hood line and we would have to cut a hole in the hood in order to use it. Now this one I really like and I tried as hard as I could to figure out a way to use this but unfortunately it's unworkable and it pushes the turbo into an area where we would need complex tubing in order to connect the turbo to the rest of the exhaust system. This type of fabrication is way beyond my pay grade so this one won't work. Now this last manifold, it's the one that was already on the car and it seems to be the best fit without doing a tremendous amount of fabrication. So this is the manifold we're going to use. It ain't the best, but it'll work just fine. Now the good news is, when I built this car, I planned ahead and built the exhaust system that was turbo friendly. This downpipe is the biggest diameter pipe I could squeeze into the limited space and it was a tough time getting the exhaust to fit under the car. Now this downpipe actually snakes around the oil pan on the engine and it takes up all the available space under the car. It's definitely a tight fit. Now obviously we need to keep the bottom of this pipe exactly the same because this pipe is custom fitted to the engine. However, up here we can cut the pipe and tap into it with a modified section of pipe that will be coming from the turbo. The tubing I ended up using to make this pipe has a 2 inch inside diameter, which may seem small, but keep in mind this pipe and the rest of the exhaust system is huge for a 719cc 3 cylinder diesel engine. Anyway, we did some testing when the Kubota engine was in the Saturn and 2 inch pipe was plenty big for such a small engine. It turns out that the inch and a half pipe that we originally used on the Saturn was actually too small. Go figure. Now it's really easy to lose sight on how small this engine really is and the fact that everything we do is on a tiny scale. It turns out that this engine is about $2 bills long, which is close to about two recently printed Euro bucks. Now I didn't know this, but apparently older Euro bucks are a little bit smaller for some reason. Now what's up with that? Anyway, the Saturn MP3 close ratio 5 speed gearbox that we're using on this little Honda is a lot bigger than the engine. And yes, we made this Honda better by using parts from a dilapidated Saturn and an engine from a refrigerator. Anyway, let's take a closer look on how this turbo fits 
this engine. So once again, I want to remind folks that this is a tiny engine and it's also a cold running engine. The exhaust system doesn't get crazy hot like you would expect on a normal car. So what that means is there's no issues with anything under this hood ever getting hot. And that's just the nature of how this car works. And the reason I mention this is the exhaust system is going to get pretty close to the radiator when we finish the turbo installation. And from a few years experience with this little engine, meh, that's not a big deal. Actually, it would be awesome if it made the engine run a little bit hotter, but it won't. Nothing makes this engine run hot. Nothing. Now this tiny turbo looks huge when compared to the engine. Unfortunately, there's a lot less space under the hood of this little Honda than there was on the Saturn. So this turbo is going to be a tight fit. Now it would be nice if we could mount the turbo directly to the exhaust manifold, but that's not even possible. So we're going to have to use a custom adapter to get the turbo to bolt onto the manifold. So this is sort of the turbo adapter that we used on the Saturn. Actually, I had to modify this a little bit and I cut this section out to make this thing a lot shorter. Basically, I had to make this thing as small as I could possibly make it while still allowing the bolts to be installed and tightened. Now, I'm sure most of you folks notice by now that I keep saying stuff is tiny or small and stuff is a tight fit. You see, the reason I keep mentioning this is, well, this ain't a huge truck with a Dirty Max or a Power Stroke engine. Nope, this is a little car with a ridiculously small diesel engine. You know, I always look forward to the comments and there's going to be a few folks who forget the scale of this project and the fact that everything has to be custom made. You know, I can't just open up a catalog, write a check for something that I need. I have to fabricate everything and I have to do it on an extremely tight budget. You see, this channel doesn't generate a lot of revenue and my accountant gets mad when I spend more than a hundred bucks on parts. Alright, so the turbo is installed and it's good enough so we can start taking measurements for the parts that we need to fabricate. Now the good news is, since this engine was previously in the Saturn and we've had a turbo on it in the past, well, we do have an oil drain for the turbo already installed in the oil pan. And by the looks of it, it's been leaking for a while. Eh, that's fine. Over on the back side of the radiator support, we have about one millimeter of clearance and that's not going to be enough. So we'll have to deal with that at some point. Now over here, you can see how the exhaust exits the turbo pretty much in the wrong direction. But that's not a problem. We have a few pipes ordered that'll turn this exhaust around and get it to connect to the existing downpipe. So no worries there. Now, as you can see, we built a full exhaust system for this car and we did install a resonator, but we never did put in a muffler. Now with this turbo, we'll definitely not be needing a muffler and that's good news. Anyway, the exhaust system is made from two inch diameter pipe, which is gonna be fine for such a small engine. At this point, well, we sort of ran out of parts, but the good news is they're on their way and they'll be here soon. So the fact that we're working on this car will make my accountant extremely happy. I guess it's a numbers thing or something. Unfortunately for the Renault, we need to figure out what to do with that car soon or the accountant's going to get mad again. We'll see you next time. Until then.